Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to the Sari Fogwe podcast. I am so excited about this session today. It's a very special session because I have someone here who goes way back with me. Um, he is a brother. He's a friend. Um, he's my tall little brother. <laughs> um, he is a father. He is a husband to my classmate, you know, my friend Megan. Shout out to you, Megan. Um, he has three beautiful daughters, and he'll tell you more about himself, so I'm not going to steal his thunder here. But I do want you to make sure you're sharing the video, you're liking us, and you're following us, because today will be a very special session. So before we delve into it, I want to introduce to you no one else but... Mr. Gustav B. Achu. Welcome. <laughs> well, thank God. It's just the two of us in the room. Otherwise, I would have been thinking you probably um, introduce someone else. Such is a great pleasure to see you again. Yeah. It's a great honor just seeing the great work you've been doing, the development we've had, how far we've come from our days in Minnesota running behind hours in nursing homes, right? It's always very beautiful to know that great dream starts from humble beginnings yes. so it's a great honor great pleasure great privilege just to be on the set today to see exactly the evolution in your life you are one of those when i talk about resilience i talk about you you started off as an accountant you worked as an accountant for many years you told yourself god there is more in me i want to show more i want to give more i have something more to offer you moved from there into the healthcare industry walked yourself all the way from a cna all the way to an np you got there and you say god this is still not enough i still have another 40 50 years ahead of me what am i going to do with myself right and then you got in the financial industry telling people how to protect their family protect their future protect their financial foundation listen that's a journey worth at least three books. Oh, wow. It's a great pleasure to be on your platform today. Well, thank you so much, but it's not about me today. Absolutely. But I appreciate yeah, that. I know course. you've, you know, you've been there, you've been through the journey, but that's also part about part of what we're going to be talking about today. Absolutely. Because we're talking about the the theme today, the topic is the American dream. Is it really an American dream or an immigrant nightmare? Of course, of course. So we're kind of, you know, <laughs> and you started this sort of this conversation on Tori Day's um, platform. You know, our producer, shout out to Tori Day. Uh, always. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah, you started this conversation a few <clears throat> days ago, and I'm glad that we're kind of, you know, it's kind of a segue into today's absolutely. session. Absolutely. Um, but we do, it's a topic that needs to be talked about. Absolutely. It, it's a yes. broad topic, yes. right? And you can't really cover it. We went for about an hour, 30 minutes. It was still not yeah. enough, right? Yes. We can even go for multiple hours. It's a broad topic because every day we see new things, we see new opportunities, and we see new avenues by which we could transform that dream mm -hmm. and make sure we're avoiding it from ending up as a nightmare, yes. right? Yes. The beautiful thing about the American dream is that a lot of times, 99% of the times you have a choice. You could transform it into a dream yep. or you could transform it into a nightmare, yeah. right? And when you talk about the American dream, the way I look at it is very simple, right? A dream is not really what you see when you go to sleep. A dream is what will not even let you sleep exactly. in the first place, yeah. right? True. So when you're thinking about American dream, you're not thinking about the American dream for Denzel Washington. You're not thinking about the American dream for Tori Day. You're not thinking about it for Sagi or for Gustav. You are thinking about your American dream. What is that dream? Yeah. Have you defined that dream? Have you made it clear, first of all, in your mind, what amounts to that dream, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be chasing the wind. Otherwise, you'll end up in a nightmare and you'll be looking for people to blame them. Yeah. There'll be nobody to blame because everybody would have left the chain station yeah. and you are left there cold, yeah. frustrated, oh, yeah. broke, and angry. Yeah, but then again, when you think about it, um, when people, those of us in the diaspora, right, Absolutely. when you're leaving where, whatever country you're coming from, it depends on your, the reason you left the country Absolutely. in the first place. Absolutely. Some people, it depended on what they saw on TV, mm -hmm. the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. For Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Right. You're thinking that everybody lives that way in America, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you're coming with some kind of expectation. You're mm -hmm. expecting that, okay, when I walk in, there will be a red carpet waiting for me. Uh -huh. I can jump on my bed with my shoes. I uh -huh. can, you know, uh -huh. I'll have that perfect family where everybody sits at the dining room table. Uh -huh. 
to uh -huh. eat together. Absolutely. I can count how many times I sit down with my family to eat. Most of the time, my little one imposes uh -huh. it. My nine-year-old says, Correct. Mommy, we need to eat together. Uh, Correct. Before Correct. we sit down and eat together. You know, because yes. you're just, you're going. Absolutely. The, that dream gradually slips out of your fingers and, you know, it, it, it gets away from you, the dream that you had, right? Absolutely. So, depending on what it is, you know, I know you kind of talked about it the other mm -hmm. day, but in your case, what was your initial American dream? Uh, for, for, I think for you, you hit a very important point, right? It's on. It's important for everyone to understand that, like with every important dream in your life, right? That plane has to make some stops, right? It has to make, it's like when you leave Cameroon and you're coming to New York, you most likely stop in Germany, in Belgium, in France, somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. But it's possible. You can have the dream of putting your shoes on the chair. You can raise your legs up and do nothing. But that dream has multiple stops before you get there. Now, if you're thinking that you're just coming into that dream, it will not be what you have created. It will be probably something somebody else has created and you're just coming to enjoy from that. That is less than 1% of the case. And most likely it's not sustainable because you will not have acquired the yes. skill set yes. that it takes to sustain that kind of dream, right? But for me, it's very simple. My American dream is... Uh, at this point in my life, it's very clear, right? What was it before? I oh, what was it? The evolution. Oh, you want to see the evolution? I want to see the oh. evolution. <laughs> yes. What was That's it initially? I want to see the... Now, let me let me take you back many years <laughs> back. From two, from three, right? In those days of pen pals and writing letters and all of that stuff. I remember one of the key things that was, I was always obsessed about was becoming a stockbroker working on the New York Stock Exchange. No kidding. Now I understand why I like money, right? Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Because from that very tender age, it's always been a passion of mine. Well, that was my dream. I thought I would become a stockbroker. I would like to work on the New York Stock Exchange. But that was around the age of 13, 14, right? And as life evolved, I realized that things change, right? So coming into America, my dream has always been very simple but very steady. Number one, I have to do all in my power to live to the potential that I believe God placed in me. Mm -hmm. Now, what that takes is, as everyone would probably understand, sometimes dreams are expensive, mm -hmm. passions are yes. expensive, yes. and the demands of America warrants that you have to get going, right? But the important thing is always making sure you have that dream yeah. next to anything you're doing, yeah. so that way, whenever you're working, whatever you're doing as a job, you're also making sure that what you are born to do is staying close to you. So you keep progressing that too slowly. It doesn't happen in the day. A lot of people see the glory, they never understand the story, yes. right? Yes. I'm reminded of a story of the bamboo tree, the Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree, it's a small seed, right? When you plant the bamboo tree under the ground, you know how long it takes to sprout? It takes about five years to sprout. I can imagine that if I planted a Chinese bamboo tree in my yard, every morning I wake up and I'm pouring water over it. My neighbors, after a few weeks, will start laughing. I'm sure that African guy is crazy. He keeps like, pouring like, water over something that is yeah, not growing, right? Exactly. But wait five years. Yeah. Once it sprouts, then it takes a few months and it can yeah. go all the way to 67 feet mm -hmm. and above, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the question I have to ask, did it grow underneath the ground or within just those seven months that it took to grow close to 100 feet tall? It grew underneath the ground. That was the period of yes. preparation. That was the period of nurturing. That was the period of it getting itself ready to explode. Mm -hmm. But nobody sees that period because it was under the ground. So my neighbors were very certain they were ready to call CPS yeah. or, or one of the social services <laughs> to, to come and pick me up. Right? <laughs> that these guys three crazy. Girls away. Like, exactly. Your dad's yeah. crazy. <laughs> so, but, 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 but basically, that is what has always guided my American dream. American dream has always been number one, live up to my full potential. Mm -hmm. And then leverage what God gave me as a unique skill to be able to impact not only the people around me, but most importantly, my continent mm -hmm. of Africa. The reason why is because when I look at the outlay of America, America is a conglomeration of immigrants, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at all the different immigrant communities, they have their anchor where they come from. All my Jewish friends I've worked with always go back to Israel. They know that they have to go to Israel. Yeah. They know that they have to invest in Israel. They know it. My Chinese friends, the same. I met some in university in California and Berkeley. They come over here, they study, they get an MBA from California, Berkeley, they go open companies in China. So as African people, as Cameroonian people, as African immigrants, we must think in that perspective. So my dream is to also be able to provide a bridge for that transition 
right? Yeah. One of the interesting things to know is our generation today, when I go to different events, I talk to different people, right? I always say, it doesn't have to be absolute. You don't have to move back or live in America. No, in our generation and the generations to come, it will be a, 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 a shared functioning kind of system, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Think about it for a second. I'm from CPC Bali. I went to CPC for seven years. That's the high school I went to, right? Mm -hmm. And when I think about four different high schools, Sase, Sacred Heart, PSS Mancon, maybe lots, right? Mm -hmm. My generation from those four schools has at least 200 medical doctors let, in America. Let me set it in perspective a little yes. bit. For those, because we have a diverse um, audience, absolutely, right? Absolutely. So the schools that he just named, I went to one of them, and it's, those are boarding schools in absolutely. Cameroon. Um, those are really top-notch schools, right? Um, and here, boarding school is like you're going to the army. When they send you to boarding school, it's like you did something wrong. No, boarding school for us was a privilege. You know, it was a privilege. <laughs> we enjoyed it. You stayed at school, you know, and all that. So I just had to set that. Absolutely. In a little, to create some perspective. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So now the reason I was bringing that up, right, Sagi, is because think about it, right? Amongst just those schools, I'm not talking about the hundreds that exist, just those schools. I know at least 60 to 70 people who are just my age mate mm -hmm. of the same class, medical doctors, mm -hmm. I know about 100 engineers, mm -hmm. I know about 200 nurses, mm -hmm. I know about 200 nurse practitioners, right? Mm -hmm. I know about 300 educators. All I'm saying, I'm not saying anybody should just get up, pack your bags and move, no. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying, if we all contribute a piece of our time, incrementally, it builds into a voluminous amount of impactful service. I don't know if that makes sense. You are. And it starts, yeah by the mindset yeah. of understanding where our anchor is, right? So one of the things that drives my American dream is to provide that bridge, that ability for us to be able to leverage the privilege of America while helping America build, which is where we live, and that is the right thing to do. We can also help our anchor yes. become mm -hmm. as progressive as where we to live. Not to forget where we're coming from. Absolutely. Yeah, because that initial dream that you had was all of you, was about this stuff. Absolutely. You weren't going to help anybody. Okay. Not much. I mean, yeah, if you made the no, money, it was more, you were going to throw uh, You didn't think here. it that far. You just but thought about that wearing you, that white shirt with a yes, black tie, right? Yes. Being in New York and most likely calling family yeah. and saying, hey, you know, I, I live in New I live in New York now. I'm a stockbroker, right? And exposing. <laughs> yeah, so right. it's really, and that's what our careers are, right? Our careers Absolutely. are about us, mm -hmm. but paying those bills, mm -hmm. taking care of you, and maybe mm -hmm. your immediate family. But when you start talking about your passion, yes. When you start talking about your purpose, yes. When you have those in perspective, and you really, really chase those and get that dream in in the right direction. You're, you're not only helping you. Absolutely. And that's one thing about this platform. Yes, you know, um, you know, my producer here, my humble producer here, when he pushed me to start this platform, it was about, you know, like we need to document what we're doing. We need Absolutely. to we need to reach out to the community. And that's what I'm all about. Community, because yes. the dream that you're talking about is not just about you. You're not only going to impact your life or your immediate family. You're going to impact the community. Absolutely. So how do we foster this? How do we get it where people can get out of their heads mm -hmm. and start thinking that, yes, I came to this country with this dream in mind, mm -hmm. but now I have to reshape this. Absolutely. I have to reshape this to, to hone into my skills, to mm -hmm. hone into what I'm able to do. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're helping your community. How can we get people to start thinking that way. Yes, you're doing it. You're showing mm -hmm. people how mm -hmm. to do it by doing what you're Absolutely. doing. But how can we get our community to wrap that around their heads and, and really think that this is something that we should be doing to bring our, our skills together and make our community mm -hmm. better and go back to that anchor that you talked about? I, 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 I think you make a very good point there. Listen, yeah. I know a story of an Italian sculptor. You know Italians are great sculptors, right? And this is a medieval story. And this great king called all the sculptors in the nation and asked them to sculpt the most beautiful effigy of a goddess. And so one of the first things the sculptors had to do was decide on what kind of stone that was going to be done, right? Mm. So the sculptor from one of the most local parts of Italy came and invited the king and his entourage and said, come with me. 
So they started walking in a quarry where you have stones. And he looked at a big rock. And he said, look at that rock. His Royal Highness, the king looked at the rock. He said, boy, look at her hair. The king looked. He said, look at her fingernails. Boy, they are clean. They are neat. They are beautiful. They are like nothing we've ever seen. And by the time he got in, in about two minutes, the guards and the king looked at him and said, this guy is crazy. What is he talking about? He said, you, you can't see it. And they go, no, we can't see it. We just see a rock, an empty, big, ugly rock. And he said, that is fine, right? Mm -hmm. It starts with a rock. Yes. And as he went along sculpting that rock, it slowly started shaping up into that beautiful goddess, which today is in some museum in Italy, right? Mm -hmm. That is how dreams are like. Mm -hmm. When the dream starts, you are the only one who can yes. see it. You are the only one who feels it deep in here. Nobody yes. else can feel it. Yes. Nobody can see it. And so when you're telling somebody, it's like you're crazy. It's like that sculptor trying to paint an image of a goddess out of a big old rock. Yes. That doesn't make sense. But then as you get along, you start sculpting it. It doesn't change it from the initial plan to be a goddess, but it's just making it better yeah. it's making it crispier yeah. it's making it more beautiful yeah. and you're taking out all the excesses mm -hmm. that are not needed and making it into a fine perfectly sculpted princess that is what the american dream is you start off with that dream yes from time you can you can actually switch all yeah. together mm -hmm. but even when you do know that it's a process of sculpting it mm -hmm. into that perfect vision yeah. that you've always had the second important thing to understand for a lot of people, it, it, you know, one of the biggest challenges that adults, that attack adults and stop them from attaining anything they want is the fear of failure. Mm -hmm. We all know that. It's common sense, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, an even bigger challenge is the fear of success. What to do with it? What to do with it? Yeah. If I you try. Have to have the capacity. To if I try yeah. and it works. What next? What next? Yeah. Right? Yeah. A lot of times people don't envision that. Yeah. We talk about dreams. I have this dream. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Do we believe? Have we envisioned ourselves sitting in that massive three-day studio, 14-story mm -hmm. buildings, downtown Dallas? Yeah. Have, we, <laughs> have we seen that in our subconscious? If we're not seeing that, then we don't believe enough in our dreams. See why I brought him on here. <laughs> He's going to fill right? us with some golden nuggets absolutely, today. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so, yes, we're talking about American dream. We're talking about, you know, versus an immigrant nightmare. But we also want to get to know Gustav <laughs> a little bit more. You, I, I didn't even talk about all his accolade, accolades, right? He is a motivational speaker. He is a, an MC. He's an IT professional. I mean, how many hats can one man wear? You know, absolutely. Like one of the hats he has on, right? <laughs> he has multiple <laughs> of those hats. So absolutely. tell us more about Gustav. What more can I say? <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, uh, well, basically, I'm originally from Cameroon, as you know, grew up in Cameroon. I went to school out there, finished high school, finished university in Cameroon, came to the U.S. at the age of 23, um, father of three beautiful girls, right? And just like you said, the things that drive me, I have a, I usually like to distinguish that, right? There is a job and there is your work. It's important, right? In my mind, in my spirit, there's a distinction. Your job is what you pay to do. Your work is what you're born to do. Right? You can retire from your job, you never retire from your work, right? Mm -hmm. Your job can change your financial circumstance, your work changes your legacy. Are we together? Yes. So yes, in terms of my job, what I'm paid to do, I'm an IT professional on a day-to-day -day basis, work for multiple Fortune 500 companies. But in terms of my work, I am passionate and I'm committed to serve, not only as a keynote inspirational speaker, but I'm a fullness in living and business coach, right? I help people perform quickly on their businesses mm -hmm. and also find it in themselves to be able to be the best version of themselves. And the reason why I get drawn to do that in addition to my MC work, which I do a lot for passion, the reason why I get drawn to do that is because of my own experiences. When I came to America at the age of 23, at the age of 23, 23 years ago, I hope I don't look 46. I look 30 probably. You, you look like 28, 28. You pass for 28. I'm still older than him. I can pass for 28. I don't care. I'm still older. I'm you know, in my big sister shoes. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I came to America 23 years ago, I realized 
we were not prepared. We were not trained to believe in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we find ourselves in a country where self-belief is one of the most important tools to achieve anything you ever dream about, number one. Number two, we were not raised and trained to believe that dreams can come true. Yeah. We were not raised and trained to believe like the young boy who got up behind the lawn in their home, if you know baseball. He picked up his baseball bat, he picked up a ball, he went behind their house, and he would throw the ball in the air and try to hit it. While doing that, he's telling himself, I'm the greatest hitter the world has ever seen. And as he tried hitting, he kept missing. He threw it the third time, he missed. He threw it the fourth time, I'm the greatest hitter, boom, he missed. And then he caught the ball the fifth time and he said, no, I am the greatest pitcher. Because when you pitch, the pitcher's role is to pitch and make sure you're not able to hit it. And then it sank in now to him, right? His role was. Exactly. Yeah, we were not trained mm -hmm. to believe that our dreams can come true. That is why I talked earlier about preparing not only the fear of failure, but the fear of success. Mm -hmm. Because our minds are not naturally wired to believe that we deserve the best, yeah. that we deserve to be great, yeah. that we deserve to be successful. Mm -hmm. Think about it. The statistics here in America says about 24% of African immigrants coming into America have some kind of college education. Yeah. About 40% have a GED, right? We are beautiful people, good looking. Look at you. Look at all, all Africans, right? They're articulate, educated people. Why aren't we great? Why aren't we yet creating an impact in this country? Don't forget, we are playing amongst the top in terms of earning capacity, in terms of the variation of different professions we are involved. Why aren't we stepping out? opening our chest and stepping up and saying we belong to the table. You know, it's usually said if you're not sitting on the table, you are most likely the menu. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Help, Jesus. Okay. Oh, my so, goodness. <laughs> so, Nuggets. So, I, 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 and, 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 and I say this in all honesty, right? Yeah. Because when I analyze it, I realize to myself, Gustav, the question is not our education. The question yeah. is our learnedness. Yeah. Our learnedness means our extreme focus on specific process without lifting our head to look what is happening. Nice. You and me went to school by form three. At the very young age of 14, somebody is telling me I'm an art student. Yeah. I got to study all the literature, oh, history. Yeah. And nobody told me, listen, we are living in a world today where literature is important, history is important. Yes, but you have to make sure you also implement STEM. Science, technology, engineering, math. That is the present, that is the yes. future. Yes. My children are taking online classes today on coding. I don't care what you want to do. You have to know how to code on the computer. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Back home, if, if you went to a technical school, you were looked at exactly. as a dumb person, right? Exactly. Like you were dumb. We didn't think about exactly. that. Exactly. And you're talking about taking um, a direction, art, science. Yeah. I stopped learning math at some point because a teacher told me I wasn't good. Exactly. So I shut down. But Absolutely. Me, I came here, I'm doing prereqs, uh, and end up in the medical exactly. field, you know, doing that. Because somebody told me I wasn't Absolutely. good enough. And Absolutely. So I shut down until somebody picked me up and said, no, we're going to take two weeks and prepare for math for GCE. Of Ended course. up with a C. Of course. Could have been an A. Absolutely. But somebody shut that dream down. But think about... It's the background that we have. We have very educated parents mm -hmm. who, you know, they believe in the five fingers of life. If, if anybody ha has seen that picture of the five fingers, the first three on those fingers are what? Engineering, medicine, um, science mm -hmm. on the five fingers of life. The fourth one is politics. Okay. So the A students, where do they go? Engineering. The first three. Uh -huh. Those who are the top in the class, right? Correct. They become the doctor, the scientist, uh -huh. the technologist. The fourth one, politics. The B student goes there. Uh -huh. You're like, okay, I'm not going to do all that. Uh -huh. I'm going to be a politician. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The fifth finger is business, money. Uh, that's right. But who ends up hiring the doctor? Are uh, the money people. Uh, that's right. That's but right. nobody tells us when we're growing up that yeah. stop thinking as an entrepreneur. Yes. Stop thinking as a business owner. Yes. Stop thinking about owning your own. Yes. Instead of yes. you clocking in and clocking out for somebody. Correct. I'm not saying jobs are bad. I came oh, from I, one. I, it's absolutely I came beautiful. from one before I got on this podcast. Absolutely. Because Correct. I believe in what I do. I believe in my career. Correct. But I also believe in helping people build that dream. And absolutely. that's why we're here talking absolutely. about this. Absolutely. Because there are people who have 
made up their mind that they've come to this country, the, the, the opportunities are not what they thought it was, but they don't want to pivot uh -huh. to something that uh -huh. will work for them. So that's why we're having this conversation today, because we need to talk to somebody. Absolutely. We need to talk to somebody out there who's maybe giving up. Uh -huh. Talk to somebody who's trying to give up on life. Absolutely. How do we mentor these people? I mean, we need to be able to mentor people, even people when someone who comes in today from, from say, Cameroon, right? Yeah. How do we mentor that person to already start thinking in this direction mm -hmm. without them looking at you like, oh, Gustav, yeah, you went and got your degree. Now you don't want me to. You're telling mm -hmm. me about this and, dream. Mm -hmm. How do we speak to people like that? You know, what I'm what, what I say is very simple, right? It's very important to understand that all the things you've said are still good paths, right? It's important. You can get a degree if that is part of the plan. You can all these things is important. Nobody is refusing, right? What I really advocate for, number one, is finding a way to also look deep in your heart. What music is your heart beating for? Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. listen i was listening to one of my mentors les brown and this is what it says it says the highest rate of heart attack in america is on monday mornings do you know why because 80 percent of people go to jobs they hate so they wake up in the morning and the heart says you again going to that <laughs> you again <laughs> <laughs> okay that's so bad but i think the important thing first of all is to understand the concept of ownership yeah. ownership doesn't necessarily mean not everyone is born to be an entrepreneur. No. I agree. Yes. But ownership means taking responsibility and ownership for your life. If you want to be a sweeper, be the best sweeper there is. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a gas station operator, be the best mm -hmm. gas station operator there is. Right? If you want to be a doctor, be the best doctor there is. We have we have a wide variety yes. of all these careers, mm -hmm. right? But if somebody is sitting out there, one of the reasons I drove today to from Austin to come and talk to you yes, is because did. I believe, <laughs> I believe somebody can make use of this information yeah. you see the mind is very powerful and a lot of times we spend our times feeding our bodies feeding our physical bodies right we exercise we want to lose weight we eat less we go to the gym we build muscle we do all of these things but we never feed what drives the body mm -hmm. which is the mind mm -hmm. right and until that mind is fed the body cannot be nourished so it's easy, therefore, to look at life and see darkness and somebody else looks at it and sees light. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of a story of this old lady who would get up every morning. She was retired. She used to be a nurse. She would get up every morning, sit in her living room. There was a big glass window in front of her, right? And every day, her neighbors would come and dry their clothes on the laundry line. And she would look through her glass window and she kept wondering, why would they come and dry dirty clothes? Uh, it doesn't make sense. Why would they come and dry dirty clothes? And so one day, his son -in -law, uh, her son-in-law came over and visited and looked at her window. I said, oh, Grandma, it's very dirty. We need to clean it. And he cleaned her window. And the next day, she looked through the window and noticed that the clothes were Clean. clean. Her window glass yes. was what was dirty. dirty. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. So for a lot of people who sit out there and they want to give up, the opportunities are yeah. there. Just take out your glasses, clean them. clean them up, and put them on again. Those Gucci glasses. Right? And see what changes. <laughs> Are we together? Yes. Exactly. You can tell the yes. passion is oozing it's out there. of me. I know, right? right? It's like pouring I, 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 I can't wait. So that is something, right? It's also important to understand that life is designed mm -hmm. to give the people who seek what they want. Yeah. They say, if you seek, you will find. Yes. If you ask, you shall get, mm -hmm. right? If you have a challenge, go out and look for solutions. Yeah. Get on YouTube. Type how you feel. Go on Google. I feel nasty today. How can I maybe help myself? Yeah. You will see something that can guide you to some other thing that can lead you to a podcast like this, mm -hmm. which can change your mind oh, and wow. can change your perspective, yeah. right? We yes. need to be active in saving our own selves. I don't know if it makes yes, sense. It's like I'm driving on the highway going to Austin at midnight mm -hmm. and my car broke down. I'm sitting by my car and Philip or one of my friends stops by or a stranger stops by with a big truck and says, sir, do you need some help? I say, no, 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 no. I don't need no help. I'm fine. I'm not even helping my own yeah. self to save myself. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. You must be a little aggressive with your life. 
you must be a little bit audacious with your life. It's not enough to, to just sit back, develop this victim mentality, and don't do nothing. Of course, I have a lot of empathy if it's a medical condition. We know sometimes life beats you down yeah. to the point where you could get depressed. And if it's that kind of case, please seek medical help. Yeah. There's all kinds of help, right? But the life we live today, the, the game of life, where we are today, you have to own your destiny. Yes, you do. You just, you just have to. Yeah. There is no other way around it. Nobody is coming to save nobody. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to an Indian friend of mine. We used to work together at Accenture, one of the top consulting, right? I didn't even hear about this. Is like maybe six, seven years ago. I didn't even know about this institute. Do you know the hardest university to get into in this world? It's not Harvard. It's not Stanford. It's not Oxford. It's the Indian Institute of Technology. Over 14 million applications. And they want a couple of hundred of students. Wow. So you got to be the best of the best yeah. of the best of the best. Is there any surprise why the top technology companies in America today have CEOs from India? Interesting. Are we wow. together? Wow. We have to also yeah. understand because we can learn certain things from these different communities, right? Mm -hmm. I was listening to a podcast yesterday by Miles Monroe. May so rest in peace. Great guy. Pastor out of, I think, Barbados or so, but he was here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he said he went one time, Sony invited him to come and do a coaching mm -hmm. for the executives and their managers on leadership and the good stuff. So he went to the Sony plant in Malaysia. And the first day he, he dealt with the everyday staff, the second day he dealt with the managers, the third day he dealt with the, with the executives. Mm -hmm. And after he finished, the CEO said, you know what? Man, I like what you do. Can we go out for lunch? And by the time they got to the launch restaurant, the CEO was there with all the executives and all of them had notepads. They said, we still want to pick your brain. So they started picking his brain, asking him different questions as they were chatting. And then he turned around and he asked them, but listen, I have something I've always wondered about. You guys help me. Everywhere I go in the world, the Chinese have businesses in some of the poorest parts of town. How come? And they looked at each other because some of them were Chinese. They looked at each other and they said, you know what? That's a question we ask ourselves to all the time. And then one of them said, but I'm just guessing that this is the reason. It's a difference in mindset. Mm. When a Chinese man comes into a community, he's asking himself, what kind of business can I start? When an African immigrant comes into a community, they're asking themselves, where can I get a job? You see the difference? Yes. yes. You see the difference? Yes. Even when the Chinese works, he's working temporarily to raise money to start a business. I'm not saying everybody has to start a business. No. no. But I'm saying that kind of mindset yes. is what pushes you to compete yes. in the world of today. I don't know if it makes sense. It I know young brothers of mine who are medical doctors, who are nurse practitioners, who are CRNAs, and you know what they are doing for a living today, even though they practice, but what is giving them and taking them to the American millionaire dream is real estate investing. Yeah. I know yeah. them. I'm not saying yeah. these are people yes. I know, right? It doesn't mean three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year is not big. That is huge money. Only about five yeah. percent of America yeah. makes that kind of money. But they are saying if your dream is bigger than that, yeah. then you also have to change the playing field yes. where you're playing in. Yeah. But before you change the playing field, you have to change your mind. Yeah. You have to believe that you belong to that playing yeah. field, right? Because we have to think about a legacy, Absolutely. generational wealth. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I talk about that a lot um, in, in other videos and on my mm. other, you know, platform. But it's all about us getting out of that mindset of um, I'm only going to think about today. Absolutely. Or Saturday mm -hmm. or next week mm -hmm. instead of thinking about three to four generations down. Yes. What am I? I can't hand over my nurse practitioner. No, you cannot. Degree to my no, kids. you cannot. I can't. If I pass away today, that that's it. It's that over. Stream ends. It's over. But we have to start thinking about those things that we can hand down. Mm -hmm. We can. Our dream has to be big enough where we we need to get out of that trapped mindset of we're in a nightmare. We're not in a nightmare. No, we there isn't. Switch it around because we've talked about mindset. Mindset it starts from up there. And Correct. Goes all the way down. So if you're, you know, you we want to get out of that where you know it's only about me. It's about you know my immediate mm -hmm. family. The community needs us. Yes, generational, you know, teach the generation how to keep that going. 
that Correct. whole mindset. Yes, not everybody has to be a business owner, but we have to get to that point where we are at, we're not thinking scarcity. Absolutely. We're thinking abundance. Yes. I'm a pastor's kid, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In the church, Absolutely. They keep telling you it's, it almost sounds like um, poverty is, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it, it equals to mm, holiness. humility. No. Holiness mm -hmm. and humility. But that same church <laughs> uh -huh. needs my tithes. Absolutely. The same church needs me when they're when when the when the church is um uh, when they're doing a building fund, uh -huh. they need to build a new church. Where would the money come Where from? Where is it gonna come from? Absolutely. If I'm, if I'm staying humble and poor. Absolutely. So we have to get out of that mindset, you know. And you know, that same dad of mine, he's gonna be watching this, he'll be on this show one of these days. Absolutely. I'm talking I love about the guy. Yes, I love him. Yes, I already him. have a, a Good guy, a segment, a segment for him. that he's going to start Absolutely. living, um, um, writing your autobiography while you're alive. Alive, awesome. Because he believes in that. I, th like I think so as, too. Write that story as you're alive. We right? don't live a lot so for prosperity. So he'll be on the show and, you know, asking some questions. I get to ask my dad. Uh, that would be interesting. <laughs> that would be fun. But, yeah, but what I'm talking about is that generational wealth. We need to, so let's talk to people kid some of us were lucky to come here at age 20 mm -hmm. you know in mm -hmm. our 20 so we came with it, it worked for and against us because you came with preconceived ideas mm -hmm. and then at the same time you came with that baggage of what mm -hmm. you were raised with mm -hmm. so you came and some of it still kind of retarded you, your progress a little mm -hmm. bit as opposed to those kids who are born here mm -hmm. so the diaspora born kids mm -hmm. and those who come from from from, mm -hmm. from Africa, whatever country, Cameroon, wherever. Mm -hmm. Talk to those two groups of people, or or mm -hmm. or kind of talk about those two groups Absolutely. of people and how Absolutely. the dream, yeah. you know, building, building, how different yeah. it is for them. And th th that's a good one. And before I step to talk to them, I just want to take us a step back in terms of generational wealth. Now, a lot of times, I think when people hear about generational wealth, they only think about money. Generational wealth, yes. Money is involved. It's important. Financial capability. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of other things too, right? I know, for example, I know families. I have a friend, very close friend, whose dad was a lawyer, one of the most the smartest ones, studied at the top law school from Oxford University. He was a professor of the university in Cameroon. And when he passed, he necessarily didn't have a lot of financial resources. Mm -hmm. But he left some of the most valuable books mm -hmm. on earth. Mm -hmm when it comes to law and life and things mm -hmm. like that. That is wealth. Now, thinking also about posterity, about doing things, right? Because when I look at other communities, and one of the reasons why they are very, very advanced is because they think not all of themselves and now. They mm -hmm. think about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Recently, we just heard of the passing of one of the greatest political figures in our country. Great man, a father to all of us, right? Mm -hmm. To most of us. Yeah. I mean, a, a very, Enjoy, very right? hardworking man, yes. yes. And I was just watching a documentary my friend Alene Menge did on him in 2011, I believe, in no, 2003 mm -hmm. and 12, because he's 11 years old. He was 80, he was 71 then, and he died at 81. So it's 10 years yeah, ago. 10 so 2003, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. No, 2013, sorry. Yeah. And he was on his farm in Wom. That's a huge farm in Wom, right? And he said, one of the things he said when Alene was in, in, in interviewing him, he said something very powerful. He said he's doing something now that he knows for a fact he's never going to benefit from it. But he knows that generations to come will benefit. Yeah. That he had planted 60,000 trees. Bobinga, Blackwood, name some of the yes. top wood yeah. that is in demand in the world. Yeah. He's planted 60,000 of them. That is wealth. Yeah. That is generational wealth. If the children or the people who are in charge of his estate, right? Mm -hmm. Each time they take one out, they plant another yes. one. It will exist for another 1,000 yes. years, right? Yes. So it's a mindset thing. It's about mm -hmm. thinking not only about our now, mm -hmm. but about our tomorrow. Yeah. So coming to talk about... Let's share. Yes. Let's, let's stop and share the video oh, the real video. quick. Yes. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's stop and share it. Um, Absolutely. I know we've gone into it for quite a little bit, but... Oh, and yeah, the so platforms we, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so okay. I'll send, absolutely, I'll send absolutely. The link that way. So if you're joining, oh, you send it to him. Okay. So I'll just drop it on my. Absolutely. On my. Wall. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
guys keep you know yeah keep keep, keep watching keep sharing get more people to tune in information is gold we live in an age of information knowledge and uh, skill yep. that is what makes the difference one more and we should be good absolutely if you like the information please go ahead and share don't be selfish right yeah? you know sh sharing his information to here absolutely you know one of the challenges <laughs> we struggle with and you're talking about the mindset thing one of the things that we struggle with as a people is because we come from societies we come from environments of of lack we come from environments where there's always the sense of it's not there is not enough yeah. and we come to uh, or, or, uh, scarcity right mm -hmm. and we come to a place where there is abundance but our minds is too trapped to that fear yeah. you understand what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. i remember one of the first times when we got into america we went into a restaurant to eat and it was a buffet in minnesota i forget how they call that buffet it's a popular buffet china no not not the china buffet one. the uh, no. american buffet yes right <laughs> we went there to eat and i saw this brother this african brother right and this is no disrespect to yeah. anybody right it's just part of growing up and experiencing yeah. life and i saw him he went to the buffet table and loaded his plate this high and it occurred to me that he doesn't realize that he could go 10 times mm -hmm. right and not have and that's, that's, enough. That, that's enough okay but you know they got Don't to be... a point where they'll stop putting the plates <laughs> out right when they know <laughs> they stop well, putting the plates you know <laughs> don't be the, there's, there's more than enough for everybody yeah. you can go again right mm -hmm. so i'm saying that mindset is something that also affects us and we have to be conscious and work against yeah. it right information sharing we just shared the link now a lot of people are watching us online yeah. right now and i know you know this information is valuable yeah. share it with your friends yeah. share it with your family yeah. get them to subscribe to our channel so they can get yeah. more content right yes. it doesn't hurt it only gets more people doing it and the more the merrier the more and stronger the community yeah. we have right mm -hmm. so talking now to to young africans mm -hmm coming from out of africa into the us or born here mm -hmm. it's important to understand that those who are coming from out of africa into america generally are hungrier yes when i say are hungrier is because they've experienced a few different challenges in life that typical children born in america have an experience mm -hmm. That is one of the reasons I always tell parents when we have chats at barbecues. I tell parents, I say, listen, don't ever say I want to give my children what I didn't have. No. I want to give them what I didn't have on the inside to propel me. Mm -hmm. That is powerful. And I'll explain to you why. Because a lot of people think the important thing is to leave something for your children. It's not what you leave for your children it's what you leave in them. them because what you leave in them cannot be sustained yes, if yes. what you leave in them is not capable that's amazing yeah. if you leave the right things yeah. in them their own ambition will propel them to the I end i have to go back and watch this video later because I, there are some nuggets here that you know I, I, and yes. this is real life saggy yes. and i put it in practice yes. i tell my three girls i said listen daughters i love you very much you know that right but i'm sorry you know, I cannot trade my retirement for your education. You study hard, you will get a, a, a scholarship. If you don't study hard enough to get a scholarship, you can work and go to school. If you can't work and go to school, then you will take a loan. And the reason why I want that, and I, and I don't tell them, but I tell myself, it's because it is important for our children to experience difficulty. Difficulty is what defines your success. Difficulty is what propels you. Difficulty is what generates ambition. If you give them everything, why would they be hungry? I remember the gentleman who acted, who Chris, uh, Will Smith acted the movie after him, In Pursuit of Happiness. That's a real life story. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He went into an interview on Wall Street without clothes. He was sleeping in a, in a homeless shelter, right? Mm -hmm. And he, he was on one of these programs and he said something amazing. He said one of the most eye-popping things that happened to him one day was coming back from work. His teenage kids, his son and his daughter were in the living room arguing and they didn't know that he had come in. That he walked in and you know what they were arguing? When Papa dies, who is going to inherit the Lamborghini? 
And he said he went immediately and changed his will. Yep. Are we together? Yes. What we don't realize is that the reason why our generation might be relatively successful in America is because of what we never got for free when we're growing up. Are we together? Yes. It's because of the struggles. It's because of the fact that you have two pairs of shoes as a pastor's daughter. Mm -hmm. You will manage those shoes mm -hmm. for a long time. And today for Christmas, we buy our children 10 pairs of shoes. No, and we get angry that they don't respect it. Oh, no. Why should they respect it? Oh, trust me. I got out of that six years ago where my kids know Christmas first is Good. mommy's birthday. And okay. Jesus Christ is awesome. birthday. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> then yeah. secondly, they pick one just one thing okay, that's they good. Don't, i don't do the under the tree too many no i don't do that also awesome. i got out of that so even my nine-year-old knows exactly not expecting of now kids. Yeah. because and yeah. the reason why it's important sagi is because it doesn't matter how much you give a human being mm -hmm. if that person doesn't have the skill and the mindset to conserve manage and multiply within two generations the wealth is over are we together here? Yes. I don't ever make sense. Are, Listen, I mean, people, I'm just, people, I'm, people I'm forget. For words, yeah. People forget that Mike yeah, Tyson yeah. made four hundred million dollars in twelve years and blew it all in twelve years. People forget. I don't ever make sense. What that means? Mike Tyson is back again. He's starting to make money again in the sixties, and he will be more successful because he's ready now yes. to handle that kind of success, right? So, to me, the children who are born in America. Parents have to pay specific attention to teach them how to find hunger yes. within themselves. Mm -hmm. I tell my wife every day, I say there are only three things I want us to leave for our children. Number one, the spirit of fear of God. Number two, the love for humanity. Mm -hmm. And number three, personal hunger to pursue your dreams and make sure those dreams can impact humanity. If those three things are in place, we don't need to leave them no dime. How many of immigrant people in America came to America with something given to them? I got here to the airport when Presbyterian Homes brought us, they gave us $300. That's a privilege. Many people don't have that privilege. The fun, my story, I came with a check that I kept that 500. I remember I got yes. a $500 check. Somebody wrote okay. a check. Didn't know how to cash, to cash a check. A check. That check for and six it expired months. six months. Okay, look at that. Uh, look at that. Right? That's what I came to this country right? with. A lot of people come into America <laughs> yeah. with nothing yeah. in their pockets, but they are able to build a life, yeah. build a family, end up living great, great, yeah. you know, the, the, the legacies to their children and yeah. things like that. Right? Yeah. So they say great times develop weak men. Weak men cause hard times, and hard times develop strong people, say and strong again. people make say great times. Say I say again. great times, prosperous times, create weak men, mm -hmm. and weak men eventually create hard times, and hard times eventually create strong men, and strong men eventually create good time. And men in this case is both yeah, sexes, both. okay? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. right? So I am saying one of the things I advocate for very strongly, especially to immigrant parents, African immigrant parents because there is no question african immigrant parents we have the tendency to be very emotional we have the tendency to feel like our upbringing was suffering it wasn't suffering it was preparation I do, do i make sense yes. we have the tendency to think like the way we were brought up because my dad worked for the pwd we didn't have enough we were sleeping four on the bed mommy was a farmer it's suffering no it wasn't it was preparing you for resilience. Work is hard, Sagi. Yeah. You just came from work and you're coming yeah. into this. I just drove from Austin. I'm coming. I'm going back. I'm working the whole night writing scripts. Toride is going to be here editing videos the whole night. Work is hard. If you don't have the tenacity, you don't have the determination, you don't have the spirit of work, you will not be able to work. I don't care the kind of work it is. So a lot of times, African immigrants don't give themselves credit for that tenacity. They don't give their upbringing credit because we come to America with this luxury life situation around us and we think that is the perfect life that is not it do everything in your power to create in your children the ability to be hungry to be ambitious to have something that drives them to have something that makes them want to achieve if there is nothing that drives them i can guarantee you your best bet is to create maybe a trust fund 
and put a limit on it for them to spend only 10 percent a year so that way yeah. the money will never out the money can outlive them oh, yeah. if not you're wasting your time yes. yeah. and i'm saying so in yeah. all honesty yeah. right now for the children coming from out of africa into america they have a slight advantage because they've experienced things that our children here haven't experienced but one of the things that is needed they need to be renting. They need to be. Uh, they need to be guided because they are also young and they're coming with excitement of how America. You can just come in mm -hmm. and you get out of the airport. You shake Will Smith's hand, know, right? right? Mm -hmm. You know, you look left. You see Michael Jackson's house, right? If you go down the street, you and Michael Jordan will be having a drink Together. in a bar. Yeah. Isn't that what all of yeah. us thought when we were in our teenage age in Cameroon? <laughs> we luck. look at Ebony Magazine. We go, wow. Is this how all houses are in America? <laughs> Boy, my neighbor's house I'll be visiting. Yeah. And then you come to America, your family picks you, takes you to a two-bedroom apartment. Maybe it's a, a Section 8 apartment, and then the reality starts You're hitting like, you, right? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, right? <laughs> but now, one of the things we, as African immigrants, especially of this generation, have to do, we have to be open, transparent, and honest with our children. Don't try to create an impression of what is not. Are we together? Give them something to want to dream and drive for. Explain to them the process. Expose them to information that teaches them how people grow from humble beginnings yeah. to the top so that they learn that is, there is no speed in this game. Yes. People forget that Mark Zuckerberg in his 30 who created Facebook is an exception. It's not the norm. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to quote him. It's not everyday stuff. I don't like to quote the owners of Google because it's not everyday stuff. So let nobody sit there and be deceiving themselves that if I just go quick, I might no. be in my 30s. And no, 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 no. But if you follow the process, if you learn, if you go after knowledge first, if you expose yourself to activities that change your mind, change your being, give you a skill, you will certainly get there faster than us. The reason why is because you have time. Today, people are complaining about the economic challenges that America is going through. You know what millionaires and wannabe millionaires are thinking? Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Mm -hmm. Apple stock dropped by 50%. Now, if you had some savings in your account, this is the time to buy Apple. Because you know that in five years, it's going to be triple that amount of money. You're still back to your stock. You are back at 200% <laughs> more. Are we together? Yeah. This is the time, right? Yeah. Real estate is yeah. dropping. Houses have been auctioned. People are going to start foreclosing homes soon by the end of this year. Are you ready to pounce on those opportunities? Can you pick 10 of your friends and say, guys, let's bring 10, 10,000. That's 100,000. Let's go to a realtor like my friend Agent Dan who was here last week, right? And say, Agent Dan, help us, bro. Create some syndication. Let's go out and buy a, 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 an apartment complex and see what we can start doing. So that in 10 years, that apartment is worth 2 million from 100,000 today. Are we thinking like that? Mm. Are we seeing opportunity in pain? Are we seeing brightness mm. in darkness? Because the darkest hours are hours before dawn, right? So when it comes to our children, we must look at our experiences mm. as a positive yeah. and not a negative. Of course, yeah. there are experiences you want to avoid your children from going through. Yes. But mm. I am totally saying, don't make it easy for them. Yeah. Let them own it. Let them own the responsibility. My daughters know that. The, nothing pisses me off. Then I ask you, where is this? That is your personal stuff. And you yeah. tell me, Daddy, I can't find yeah. it. Oh, my God. That is your yeah. stuff. You yeah. have to know, know where, where it is. When we're done here, can you please go to my Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you can go talk to some people. <laughs> right? <laughs> that is how we force them to get the responsibility. Yeah. It's a work yeah. in progress. But I'm just saying, these are the mindsets. These are the kinds of thinking yeah. that is going to change yeah. our children yeah. for the better, right? For the long haul. Also exposing them to opportunities where they can learn and see different things. Yeah. I understand it's important for us to work, right? It's important for us to also make sure we're bringing in revenue. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to look at certain kinds of expenses as an investment. Mm -hmm. Traveling with your children yes. is an investment. Mm -hmm. It's not an expense. Yes. I don't know what you, or yeah. if I'm making sense, yes, right? Yes. Exposing your children to certain courses and yeah. programs, yeah. which might be a little bit expensive. Worth it's, it. it's, yeah. an, it's, it's an investment. Let me tell you something that happened in Sagi. About four months ago, I registered my daughter for piano, my last girl. She's 11 years old. And so every Thursday, I would take her to the piano lessons. And I would sit out from 7 p.m. to 7.30. She would play her piano and, 
And she leaves at 7.30. At 7.30, this Indian guy comes in with his son. And they will do his son's practice. And about three weeks ago, I got there and the Indian guy comes in. His son has his set of books. He has his own set of books. I say, what's going on, Arjun? Arjun says, Gustav, I realize I've been stupid. I bring my boy here. He can't practice for 30 minutes. I sit and wait for him. Why don't I just practice too for 30 minutes? After that, that way we spend an hour and we go home. Do you know I took my first piano lessons yesterday? Are you serious? I'm not kidding you. Because I realize yeah. that it's an investment. So it cost me $100 a month, $25 a session, $220 for me and my daughter. Yeah. It's an investment. It's something you're doing with, with you're my girl. Memories. I'm building yeah. memories. Yeah. I'm teaching her discipline. Yeah. I'm there to motivate her while she's encouraging me. I came back home from classes. I started trying it. She said, Daddy, that finger is wrong. Relax. Yeah. Think See? think like that. Think like that. That's how the finger works, she, right? If she's competitive, she exactly. wants to show you now. That we are you going, know, we're already so. planning on doing a, a recital together in the next four months, right? Awesome. If she practices for another two years, I would have taken two years of piano classes i don't know if i make sense right yeah. so i could look at that time like maybe i could use that time to be writing a script or thinking or writing a recording a video no there's a time for yes. that and there's a time to yes. invest mm -hmm. in building that hunger yeah. in them um, and we didn't get it we didn't we didn't get we got our parents did their best of we're course not, they we're did. not putting them down right so an example you only do what is, you yes, know you, Sagi. they did, they did, they did what, what, they, what they know yeah, what they, they sent some yeah. of us to boarding yeah. schools pss yeah. is a, it's an elite school yeah. be very careful yes. pss is an elite school yes. anywhere in the world yeah. boarding school yeah. is an elite school these people trained us the best they yeah. could and it's usually said do the best with what you have at the time you have and then when you know better do yes, better exactly now we know better we know better we're we, trying to wrong some you know wrong a little bit of those kinks right fix them exactly. or straighten out the kinks exactly because i have what i have a younger brother who was good with soccer mm -hmm. but because it wasn't the priority in the house so it was absolutely like, you know i remember my dad driving to church and seeing him play yeah him play he's now a musician by the way <laughs> we'll, right. we'll bring him he'll be on the show too awesome <laughs> MC awesome Zogo. My dad will look at him and say, look at my son. Yeah. He's playing football and I'm going to church to preach to uh -huh. other kids. You know, <laughs> for him, it was like bringing him down. Correct. But he didn't see it as this was a skill that this kid had. Correct. And, you know, that he could he could have gone he could professional. Develop. Absolutely. Same as my younger sister. She's a fashion designer. designer. Incredible and design. She started, she started I, uh, with What's her fashion dog, brand again? Um, uh, Zina K. Z incredible Zina K. designs. Yeah. Unique. And, you know, fashion. same thing. Things yeah. like that. that the mindset then when she was sewing those little dolls clothes mm -hmm. it wasn't seen as a as, as anything a gift. but that's something that now as Adults. young parents we should already see those things and build those absolutely in, in the kids absolutely but the one last thing that i wanted to 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 talk about was yes you talked about people coming from um, cameroon africa whatever ghana whatever country, congo any togo country, anywhere and um not honing into those you know into the into into their dreams it also depends on who picks you up from the airport. Yes. It I... depends on who picks you up from the airport because that dream can die on arrival. <laughs> you know, I have a little bit of a twist to that. Yeah. I think it depends on who picks you from the airport. That is very important. Yes. Absolutely. But one of the reasons we have podcasts like yours is to tell people whether you're coming today that whoever picks you from the airport is important, but you also have the responsibility to go out and find information about other things. I talked about be curious, yes. right? And the reason why I have that twist to it is because the only way you can be successful in life is when you stop blaming. Yes. When you take full yes. responsibility for, for the decision. outcome yes. of your life. Mm -hmm. It's easy to blame. Yep. You understand, Sagi? Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, I told myself, Gustav, I am done. I will never listen. What's going on? The economy is bad. Uh, yes. Taxes have been increased. What can you do about it? Go be a senator and change the yes, taxes exactly. for God's sake. Yeah. Until the then, change yourself first. <laughs> Are we together? Yes. Don't ask for a better win. As Jim Rohn says, ask for wisdom to change your sale yes. so you can sell in the right yes. direction. <laughs> Don't ask for better weather. Ask for good seed because you can control that. Yes. The weather is in God's control, right? right? At the end of the day, it's about you. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. It's about you taking responsibility. Anytime I have conflict with anybody, anytime something happens, the first person I look to is me. Yeah. Gustav, is there something you could have done differently? 
Gustav, is there something you, if you had done, maybe you couldn't have caused this kind? The reason I do that, even when it's blatant, that is somebody else's fault. It's because yes. I keep training my mind. I cannot yes. give someone else the power, power over you. to yes. determine yeah. that. Yes. It's too much, right? And this will make a difference in not just, we're not just talking about only um, in, in, you know, in, in, of course, in, in, in life in general, no, in life, whether in it's in marriages, whether it's, no, it's everything. your job, whether it's at school, it's everything. Whether everything, life you talk, in general. You talked about ownership, that, yeah, right? Yes. That is part of ownership. Yes. I tell yes. people, even if you're not an entrepreneur, even if you work, right? I met this young man, um, Dita, I forget his other name, right? He's a friend to my younger brother, my cousin. We were at my cousin's wedding in Florida a few weeks ago. And my cousin had been studying for 12 years to become a neurosurgeon at the age of 32, right? This is a young man. This guy is his classmate. They were together in med school. And, and this young man is a cardiologist. Mm. But he's not only a cardiologist. He's a cardiologist specialized on the iota. Okay? And I was talking to him. These are the young people. who we'll bring them all together, right? And yes. talk to them about yes. experiences. And I was talking to him. I said, you know, both of you were top of your school in Sacred Heart. My young cousin, Dr. Gay, was top of his class, five A's in GC, he was the SP, he used to play the piano. I said, let me tell you guys something. If the dream was to come to America, go to med school, become a neuro neurosurgeon, become a this, and now you can start work and making a million dollars a year, in the next few years, maybe two, three years, you'll be making a million dollars, but you'll only be 35, so what do you want to do with the rest of your freaking life? Now you have to start thinking about what is bigger than that. If you want a big house, you'll get it. You want a Mercedes G Wagon, one hundred and twenty fifty thousand dollars, you get it. You want a Bentley, you you want a Rolls Royce for God's sake. That is yeah. only going to be five months of your annual yeah. income, uh, yeah. the two months of yeah. your annual income for God's sake. In the next three to four years, when you become experienced, mm -hmm. you'll get it. Now I want you people to think about the responsibility that comes with the qualification and the endowment God has given you. Try it if you can get sense. You owe it. <laughs> now listen. <laughs> You owe it to your people to find solutions to the challenges that have killed our parents. Mm -hmm. What are those IOTA problems that have hurt them and killed them? You are supposed to find challenges to that. An Indian guy walks into the lab and he is doing research. He is doing research for his grandma who died in Punjabi County for something. That's what drives him. We need something more to drive us. We need something more to look forward to. We need something more to go after. Because at the end of the day, over 90% of everybody who will come to America will be relatively successful. When I say successful, you'll make some money, you have a home, you buy a car, you can buy a few good suits, you can go to parties, you can stand on Facebook, look nice. Of course, you get married, you get kids, and all of that good stuff. What else is yeah. there? What's your dream just to become a doctor? Uh, just go to the hospital every day, give medications and come back home? I know you have more than that in you. Yes. Because if you finish top of your class, you were the best GC results. You were the SP. It means people saw something in you that speaks loudly yeah. about leadership. Yeah. Are you going to go after that dream too? Mm. Are you going to be able to look and say, listen, at a certain point, it's no longer about me. Yeah. It's about those who are coming after me. Yeah. Am I creating a path? And this reminds me, one time in Minnesota, I went to downtown. There's that hospital in downtown Minnesota, uh, yeah, St. Paul. No, in downtown, downtown St. Paul. St. Paul, okay. Unity or something. Yeah, one of those yeah. hospitals. Or oh, United, my, United Hospital, yeah. My wife used to work in one of those hospitals. So I went to pick her from work one day, right? And I get there, she's delaying on the floor. So I'm sitting in the lobby. And I'm, I see this Indian guy sitting next to me. He's an older guy, maybe 65. And we start, I'm usually always chatting people up. So I start chatting him up. And we get conversing. And he told me he's one of the doctors in the hospital. He's getting close to retiring. He came in like 40 years ago in America in his 20s, you know. And uh, I asked him, I said, can you, <clears throat> sorry. can you explain to me how come today in America we have more Indian-born doctors than American-born doctors? And he said, it's very simple. Some of them who came 40 years ago as doctors into America, once they got in, they started practicing, they decided that they were going to pull themselves into groups and pull their resources together. 
so that they can get more Indian trained doctors from India into America. Now, when they come into America, they rent apartments for them and put them in the apartments and they give them stipends and they don't have to work. They focus on passing step one, step two, doing everything it takes to pass what is required to become a doctor in America. And then when they finish that, some of them who are already practicing will help get them residency and they'll start working as doctors. Once they start working, they go back and contribute in that fund and it brings the next group. Are we thinking like that? So it's like replanting that tree. Are we thinking yeah. like that? Yeah. That is the things I'm talking about here, right? Yeah. So when we're talking about our children in America and the ones that are coming from out there, I am no longer even thinking about my children anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about two generations yes. after them. Mm -hmm. That's why even at this age, I'm still open to discussions yeah. about anything that can help secure three, four, five generations down the line yes. for me. Yes. That is when now you can say, I don't want my children to experience some of the hardships I yeah. experienced. Mm -hmm. I have my friend Eric that worked with him in Oracle Corporation. And one day on Super Bowl weekend, I said, Eric, he, we met back at work on Monday after Super Bowl on Sunday. So I was the weekend. I said, fun, man. He said they went together to watch Super Bowl in one of their friend's house. And he, he was so excited. Gustav, I'm going to Tanzania. I said, what are you going to do in Tanzania? Hey, man, I, do I know? We're watching the Super Bowl at my friend's house, 10 of us classmates, you know. And my friend just told us he's decided to go on a mission trip with his church. And if they could all go support him, right? If anybody wanted to come along. And they put their hands together like they used to do in college. Each person put it on each other. They made a commitment there. They are going to go along with their friend to Tanzania to support Tanzania. Now I said, Eric, come on, man. I mean, I see you all the time. You are traveling. You and the wife have gone to Las Vegas. And you have three kids. Are you planning for college? He said, no, Grandpa took care of that. <laughs> His grandfather had already that. planned yeah. a system yeah. that will provide at least tuition yeah. for his great, 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 great yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Now something rang in my head. I said, hallelujah. Yeah. Now, if we're coming to America as immigrants, as African immigrants, and we're talking about success, I have a completely different definition yes. of what success yes. is. Yes. From that day, mm -hmm. It opened my mind a lot more about what real success means. Anybody in America can drive a Mercedes. It just depends on how you afford it. Mm -hmm. I could be making a car payment, you buy it outright. Mm -hmm. And we both are driving. That's why it's hard to know a millionaire from a regular person in America. Yes. Because they all drive a G-Wagon, <laughs> right? The difference is building those foundational yeah. things that will guarantee a certain amount of yeah. progress yeah. and deliverable. I was listening to uh, um, the Oracle of Omaha. What's his name? So one of the richest men on earth, right? And he's an American. He lives in Nebraska, this old man. I'm sorry, he's old. He's in his 80s, so it's fair. And he said, you know, he doesn't plan to leave much for his children. He just plans to leave them enough to give them the freedom to try things, but not too much to become arrogant. Yeah, arrogant. Yeah. Are we together? Wow. But now his children are grown, yeah. so God kept him for longer, so easy. But these are the things we have to think about, right? I understand we get emotional about our children. We love our children. We all do. But we must also think about legacy. Yes. Yeah. What is our legacy? Right? Yeah. What is our legacy the last time i was on the show with the general Tori Day, you know Tori Day, right mm -hmm. of course he's our producer today and he said something which is powerful he was talking about studying and building something yeah. i was the one who was interviewing he transitioned with that message yeah. he didn't realize i picked it up yeah. he said he wants a situation where his children who come and say that he started with three cameras in a little office in dallas and now i want to take it to a story level. building because they have to start from somewhere right, right? Where you daddy built yeah. to this point let me take yeah. it from here to this point that is the story of all the great american businesses that is the story of a grocery store like heb which is here yeah. i was reading about it the founder of heb started heb yeah i think it's yes heb the founder of heb started heb one small grocery store had a mechanic shop next to it or something developed it from there by the time he died he had about three or four his children took it from there and moved it and today his grandchildren have moved it into a global conglomerate are we together yes. that is how we have to start thinking and the only way we start thinking like that is when we stop worrying too much only about ourselves yeah. 
we start getting out of that scarcity mentality because the scarcity mentality is what makes us afraid i want to eat it all that's it's the scarcity a syndrome I yes think it's a syndrome actually you know, I, I, I was, we're fighting syndrome, it anything yeah. is improving right yeah. that's what made my african brother at the buffet service food so much because he was afraid that he might not go again to the table food might be finished he didn't care whether somebody was coming after him whether they'll have or not right yeah. he didn't care all he cared was himself his stomach how he wants to feed himself yeah. right we cannot think like that anymore my brother we can go on all day but uh, <laughs> i know people uh, are stealing time from their uh, jobs right now. really but i don't I think want... we've just been talking for 10 minutes right? <laughs> i know right how long have we been going but i want you to share your contact information before we go tell oh. people how to reach you okay. what you can do for them oh absolutely and as we wrap up because i know you know we, we this we will have to bring you back we we can... bring you back. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah but oh. shout out your contact no abso absolutely i think uh if it's possible we'll be put on the screen my youtube channel uh you are enough by gustav b actually just go out there if you really want to support the mission, you want to support the vision, the best you can do for me is just to subscribe to that YouTube channel and share that information with other people to subscribe. You see, that is the only way you'll be able to expose yourself to new information once we produce new videos, right? You can contact me through that. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Those are the three platforms I'm really very active on. You can go ahead and reach out to me. And uh, one of the key things I just want to remind you about, number one, is I'm all about empowering people. Empowerment has no unique path. There are multiple paths to that. I own a company training people in IT that is part of empowerment. The goal is if you want to become an IT professional, spend your whole life working in IT, that is good too. If you want to use that as a bridge, that is good too, right? I also work as a professional MC. If you need an MC for events, right? You can always reach out to me. I can help you with that. But most importantly, I work also as a keynote inspirational speaker and coach. I come to events and help people raise funds. I was out in Maryland, Washington, not long ago, and the Presbyterian Church was trying to build a new church in Maryland. They've already acquired a piece of land, and they are just needing to raise funds to build the Presbyterian Church of Cameroon in Maryland. Within an hour and a half, I was able to get them $250,000. That is not anything to say I'm trying to be arrogant or anything. We all have our gift. The difference is I finally decided I'm going after my gift. Awesome. And I'm going after it with ferocious <laughs> anger, yes. with a certain we determination that has never been seen, right? Yes. A few months ago, I helped other organizations like the Cameroonian Association of Nurse and Aesthetics. Within 30, 40 minutes, I can raise 60, 70, $80,000. So if you're looking for someone, a professional MC who can engage your, your, your audiences, steal them, educate them in that process, raise money for you in that process, you can always reach out. Awesome. Maybe for Saggy's sake, I'll give you a discount. I know, Otherwise, right? Just mention that you saw him on the show and then you get it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, but you know, sense, I hope you're listening. Absolutely, absolutely. But you know, yeah. uh, we'll go ahead before I do the yeah, last no, one. No, I just wanted oh, to yeah? thank you. I mean, I appreciate you being Absolutely. here today. Driving from Austin to Absolutely. come and sit down and talk with me is a lot of value uh, for me. You know, I, uh -huh. I don't take it lightly. And, you know, I'll definitely, you know, return the favor if it ever uh -huh. comes up. Um, just want to appreciate you. I want to appreciate all of you out there who are watching. Absolutely. I appreciate you for liking the video, for subscribing, sharing, and talking about what we're doing here. And if you're out there and you have anything that you're doing to, in the community and you want to showcase it, this is the place for you to do it. Because we're all about empowerment. We're all about encouraging people. We're all about the community. I mean, my heart is... I reaching did. out to people you know, I right that's, that, I is, that is that's my true. passion that's my purpose that's true so Thank come you. on the show and, and showcase it and you know we just appreciate you so much so until uh, next uh, time. absolutely saggy you know it was a great pleasure being on the platform <laughs> it's just even more heartwarming just seeing how far the journey has taken all of us right you need the kid myself Megan, the kid, you know it's just beautiful to see that journey right because it's all about that journey Right, it's all about just growing day to day, improving day to day, and accumulating to something. But so it was a great pleasure. I hope to come again, right? But before I let your audiences go, I usually like to leave them with this one thing, right? I certainly don't know you in person, might be. I might never get a chance to meet you physically. I might only have the opportunity to talk to you through this virtual platform. 
because it's a great opportunity, great privilege for me to be on this. But I want to tell you that whatever circumstance you've been through in your life, wherever you were born, wherever you started off, it's not going to be a determinant to your future. I don't know the people who might have spoken in your ears, who might have spoken upon your heart and broken your spirit to believe that you are not intelligent enough, that you're not smart enough, that you're not capable of achieving what you were born to do with your life. I want to tell you today, in every simple terms, that you're special, that you're enough, that you're a masterpiece, and not two masterpieces are the same. And that, yes, you are smart enough. Yes, you are capable enough. And yes, you could achieve what your purpose and your desire is for this life. So as you go out there today, until next time, be well, be blessed, and never stop being a blessing to somebody. Amen. Absolutely. You. So it was thank a good you. pleasure. Yes, Saj, thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Awesome, thank awesome. You. It's a wrap. <laughs> We'll talk, we'll talk this way.